In this video, I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough of a potential alternative to Slack, Teams, or Discord, and it is called Campfire. So it's pretty safe to say most of us have worked in Slack or Teams or Discord or maybe even a combination of all three when it comes to communicating with a team. Now, I think one of the challenges that a lot of people have run into, particularly teams that are using something like Slack, is how reliant you become on Slack themselves, both for providing access for you and for all your team to be able to use the software, as well as just the ongoing monthly reoccurring fees that can seem to build up, particularly if your team is growing over time. So recently, the developers who created Basecamp and Hey came out with a new piece of software by the name of Ampfire. Now, as somebody who really likes Basecamp and uses Hey all the time, I reached out to them and asked them if I could get a copy so that I could show you a quick walkthrough of some of the fundamental features to see if maybe it's something that might be a good fit for you. And one of the reasons Campfire really caught my eye is that it is a self-hosted service. Unlike things like Slack where you pay them, they host everything and they remain in complete control. Campfire is something that you can set up on any server similar to WordPress. So the way that it works is that you purchase your copy of Campfire and then you purchase whatever server you want Campfire to live on and then they give you some easy to follow step by step instructions on how to get Campfire up and running on that server and from that point forward you own the software that provides some basic updates but you're pretty much free to move forward using the software and you're in control of it. You do still have to pay for the hosting service, but as you'll be able to see as you do some of your own research, particularly with places like DigitalOcean, it is significantly cheaper than things like Slack or Teams, especially once you start getting a bigger team, because with something like Slack or Teams, it's gonna scale much faster than the hosting will. The only thing the hosting cares about is how much bandwidth and file storage you're using, whereas Slack wants to probably, don't quote me on this, but probably wants to charge you more on the number of users rather than the amount of use. And just as a side note, and this is a personal thing with me, but it is a pet peeve of mine when it seems like every software company in existence these days likes to show you a monthly price and then charge you yearly. I don't know, that's always just felt dishonest to me. It would be like going to the your local Best Buy and picking up a TV and then seeing the prices $20. And then when you get to the cash register, they're like, oh, no, 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 the price is actually $150. We just charge you a whole bunch of times. We just put it in there so that it incentivizes you to, to buy it. That's not actually the price. But that little rant aside, let's jump in and take a quick look at some of my favorite features that I found as I've been experimenting with Campfire. Okay, so one of the things I'm not gonna do in this video is provide you the step-by-step -step instructions on how to get this installed. They do a really good job of doing that on their end. So instead, we're gonna start from here, which is the screen that you'll see when you first get Campfire installed on your server. So all you're gonna do to start with is you're going to just set yourself up with your admin account. So this is gonna be the first account. And of course, you're gonna be able to add any number of users that you need to here moving forward. Okay, so I have my account created and just that quickly, you're now able to start setting things up in your campfire environment. One of the things that you're gonna notice right off the bat is that it's a lot more simplistic than something like Slack. So Slack has all the channels off to the, off to the left hand side. And then you'll be able to see in Campfire all your rooms, which is what they're referred to here, are off to the right. You start out with a single one called All Talk, and then you can start creating them as you need to. So let's say I'm gonna have an archery one, and let's say one for like tools and tips just a place to chat. And you can go in here as well and edit these if you need to. Like for example, you can add in a nice emoji. That's a great way to, to add a little bit of, you know, something extra so it's more recognizable off a glance. So you can do that with any number of these rooms. And then as you can see, they're all separated out. Pretty self-explanatory. These are just ways to organize conversations. But before they start making a whole lot of sense, what we'll probably want to do is start inviting some people. So let's start inviting some individuals. 
So the way we want to do that is the easiest thing is probably just to go to your main all talk or you can rename that to general or whatever you want. Or you can click this little gear button down here at the bottom. And fortunately, it makes this very simple. It's just going to provide you an invite link. And so you just want to email this to all the different people who you want to have access to this. Now, one thing you'll want to know and keep in mind when you're using Campfire is that anybody who has access to your Campfire site has access to this link, which means they can invite anyone else. So just be aware if you're trying to use this for a lot of people that once a person has access, they, they can provide anyone else they want to access by providing this link. So you just want to make sure that that's clear when you're using it, the scope of what you're able to control using Campfire. So you can copy this link and then email individuals to join. And then you can also provide people with a QR code. So if you are at a conference or if you're in a boardroom and you just want to set this up with like six or seven people or even just your friends, if you just want to use this personally, you just snag that little QR code and it'll get them through the steps of setting this up on their phone. Okay, so here's that nice little invite. And of course it provides the opportunity to set up an account. So pretty simple, set it up, and now I am logged in as the test user. Okay, and then the other thing you'll notice up here in the top right-hand corner is all of the individuals uh, who you can actually ping directly, or you can just start leaving messages. So let's type a quick test. So one of the things I really like about this particular platform is how quick and snappy it is. Uh, so it loads really quickly. It feels just like any other app that you would use like Slack or like Basecamp. It's very snappy. It, it doesn't take any time to load. It works really well. Now you can upload videos and you can also upload images. So we'll do a quick test with that. However, one of the things you'll probably want to keep in mind, particularly since you are self-hosting this, is that if you are going to be using, uploading a lot of images or videos, that is going to weigh on the cost of your server. So if you're gonna be uploading videos especially, that could add up a lot over time. So it may be worth hosting images and videos and other things like that somewhere else. Or maybe if you want to only relegate smaller images to being uploaded directly to your campfire, that might help save you some costs as well. I did some testing. You definitely can upload videos, but that's gonna start racking up some hosting costs pretty quickly. So there you go, as you can see, it embedded it and it's got a nice pop-up. So works really well, really intuitively. But one of the things I noticed that is kind of the core of this particular platform is, is that it's very simplistic. So as you can see, it does do some pretty good embedding here, but it's really basic, it's really clean. Now, for some people, you might want more, you might want more abilities to do uploads and embeds and things like that. And again, it's, it's doing the tweets just fine. But part of what I do like about this as I've been messing around with it is just how simple it is. And what I mean by that is like, there's just some options to do some basic reactions, you know, something like something like this. Let's pop back over here so you can do some really basic reactions, but it isn't super complex, right? It isn't something that you go in here and you spend hours customizing. It's just really simple. Now, I do like that you can actually use like text here if you wanted to. You can also use an emoji here, but I just like how simplistic and quick it is. This is a great alternative, I would say, as I was using it. This is a good alternative if you're looking for something that doesn't cost you a whole bunch of time to set up. You just want a quick spot to chat and that's it. You don't want to start messing with permissions. You don't want to start hassling with who's admins, who isn't. You can do a little bit of that in Campfire, but it is relatively limited. So let's take a quick look at how that actually works. So this is the admin account that I use to actually set up Campfire. So what I can do here is I can click on the gears at the bottom right hand corner. And as you can see, it's going to list out all of the members of this Campfire. So what I can do is I can click this little crown to make this person an admin. Now what an admin is able to do is able to delete or provide admin access to other users, but that's about it. So anybody who you invite to your server is going to be able to both, let's pop back over to our test non-admin account, they can create their own rooms. 
So this is not an admin who's able to create a room. And that particular person is also able to go in there and provide who has access to it. So even me as an admin, they can remove me if they want to. So that's why if you're going to be using this for a group of people, you want to make sure that all of the people who are a part of your campfire are people who you tr know and trust because it's not something that you can go in here and fine tune a role for each individual person and what they have access to. So for the sake of convenience, like for example, if you're working with your team and you decide that, you know what, for tools and tips, testing really doesn't need to have access to that. It's not something that needs to be on their radar. So you're, you're able to go in there and remove access that way. But again, as an admin, you are able to go in here and kick people if you want to. So you're able to kick users, whereas somebody who is not an admin is not able to, you know, obviously make other admins and they're not able to kick people. They're only able to edit their own profile. The other major difference that I noticed between somebody who is an admin and who isn't is in the ability to edit or delete messages. So as you can see, you can go in here. This is not a message that I typed. This is the testing account. I can edit their message and I can delete their message. Transversely, if we were to go back to the testing account and we click this button, oh wait, that's not the testing account. So if we jump back to the testing account, we can see that they do not have the option to edit or delete unless of course it is their own message. But of course the admin can always pop in here, edit, or delete any message. Now, in terms of your account itself, you can click on your profile picture in the bottom right hand corner and there are some limited things that you can do. You can change the password if you want to. You can also add a bio. And the other option that you have on your profile is the ability to go in here and pick which rooms you want to be able to get notifications for. So for example, this room, you'll only get mentioned uh, or you'll only get a notification if you are mentioned. And then you are also, you have the option to get all notifications. So any message, no notifications, and then you can also hide it. So you can still go back and access it at any point in time. But if you don't want a particular room to be showing up in your sidebar, you can hide it. So the one that says, hello, a room, as you can see, no longer shows up in my sidebar. Now, the way that this works, of course, is that by default, uh, when you create a new room, it's going to provide everybody access. As I mentioned earlier, you do have the ability to jump in here and provide specific access only to specific people. However, by default, everybody's going to have access to any room that you create with the default functionality. You're also, of course, able to jump in and to do pings. So these are just essentially DMs. These are private messages. Pretty simple, pretty uh, self-explanatory. But again, one of the things I've just really enjoyed as I've been testing this out is just how quick and snappy it is. It loads instantly. There's no waiting. It's really lightweight. Now, the other thing I liked about Campfire was some of the basic text formatting in here. So, of course, you can do normal text, but you can also do things like you can click this button here. And so if you need to, you can like... I can type out some code if I want to. So for example, I can just click this. So if coding is a part of the community that you're trying to work with and, and share with people, it does some good code formatting. But other than that, it's pretty simple and straightforward. You can do, you can do things like block quotes, of course, add links, italics, bold. So you can do some really basic formatting, but part of what makes it so useful is just the simplicity of how everything works. Similarly to everything else, the search functionality is nice and simple. So it's just gonna look across the entire server for what you have access to. And the nice thing is that once you click on that, it'll take you directly back to that room in the context in which it was typed so that you can immediately see the, the context of the of the actual conversation. So one other thing I will mention when it comes to the upkeep and, and maintaining the privacy of your server, let's say that, you know, maybe somebody on your team accidentally leaks the QR code or, you know, accidentally, uh, you know, leaks the, the link. At any point in time, you do have the, the ability to reset it. So it's it completely resets this link and you can do that as many times as you want so that from that point forward, nobody can gain access. And then of course, if somebody does gain access, who's not supposed to, you can click this button to kick them 
at any point in time. And one other final note I'll mention as well is you're able to update the image that appears up here in the favicon. So this is kind of your server image or site image. And of course you can change this from campfire to, you know, where we chat or whatever you want to call this particular group. And then your site will be updated, but really simple, really straightforward, great way to be able to chat with a team or a community that you are very tightly knit with. Okay, so quick takeaways on using Campfire. Ultimately, I would say one of my favorite things as I was going through and using this was just how clean and simple it was to use. There was very minimal setup that I had to do. In fact, from just the time of me actually creating my account and then adding a few users, you were essentially ready to just start using it. It took literal minutes as opposed to if you're setting up a brand new Discord server, or if you're setting up a brand new Slack account, there's just so much time that goes into just getting that set up and all of the people added and making sure that all the roles and permissions are all set, particularly if you're working with a smaller group. It's just so simple. It's kind of like doing a group chat, but actually organized. The other thing I really liked about this is that I do think that it will save in the long run, particularly for groups who rely upon a single platform on which to chat regularly. I think in the short term, you're probably going to save with something like Slack. But if you're going to be using this for a year or multiple years, it does make sense to have a piece of software that you only pay for once. Now, you do have the reoccurring costs that come up with your hosting provider. However, you're most likely going to be spending significantly less on that hosting, especially if you're going to be using it over a long period of time. And especially if you're going to be doing this with a fairly small group, you're not going to have thousands of people who are going to be accessing this every day, which I personally don't think really makes sense for something like Campfire. The other thing I really personally like, and I don't think this might be as big a deal for as many people, but I really like the privacy aspect of this. And what I mean by that is one of the things I really like about WordPress is that you technically own and control all the content that's posted onto that site, as opposed to something like Slack, not to say that they ever would, but technically since they host and they control your account, they have the complete say so about what happens with all of your content. And again, not to say that they ever would, but if they wanted to and it was allowed in their terms and conditions, they could technically just cut off your access to your ability to communicate through that platform. Again, not saying that's something that does or is going to happen, but it is always nice to know that you have the peace of mind and knowing that you have control and the ultimate say so about what's said on your server and who has access to all the content therein. Now, of course, there are going to be some downsides to running your own server. Again, you are going to be completely responsible to make sure that everything works. So if there's an issue with the domain, if there is an issue with the host, you or somebody on your team is going to have to pursue and troubleshoot that. So DigitalOcean has been super helpful in my experience, but it is probably good to have somebody on your team or somebody on hand, a web developer of some sort who can actually help you troubleshoot problems should they arise. Now, in the short time I've been experimenting with Campfire, it's been flawless for me. I did have the server crash one time because I tried to upload a really big video. But as I mentioned previously, it's not really what this is for. So as a little bit of an FYI, don't be trying to upload massive files, massive videos. A, that's not what it's for. And B, the server you're using needs to be able to handle that if that's something you need. So I think the important question I need to answer here is who is this for and is this something you should get? I think what's more important is nailing down who Campfire is not for. So as I was going through and I was experimenting with this, again, I really like the simplicity of it. However, that does come with some drawbacks. And one of the biggest drawbacks to having something this simplistic and easy to use is that you're extremely limited in the type of roles and permissions and access that you provide. So for example, if somebody joins your server, your campfire site, there is nothing stopping them from sending everybody they know the link to gain access to that campfire. So you either A, need to have very clearly established ground rules with who gets to share and have access to this site, or just be okay with the fact that anybody can gain access. So something like Slack or Discord, I have very limited access with Teams, but Slack or Discord, I know that you can set permissions and roles and only certain permissions or roles can provide access to the server or can do certain things. In Campfire, anybody can gain access as long as they have the link 
and anybody who has access, even if they're not an admin, can create new rooms. So you just need to be very clear and intentional with what you want to use Campfire for. But if you want to be very particular about who has access to what, then Campfire might not be the right solution for what you're looking for. What I would say is that if you're looking for a community, a place where you can go and chat that's super easy to set up, that you maintain complete control over, and you're going to be a part of this community with people you know and trust, I think Campfire is a significantly better option than something like Slack or Discord, especially if you don't need all those extra roles or permissions or plethora of features that just kind of slow things down and get in the way of just having a quick conversation. So probably a simple way I could wrap this up would be to say that if you're doing like a group text, like 10 people or even a little less or even a little more, or you're using a group chat on something like WhatsApp, then I would say Campfire is definitely a better option than those. However, if you're managing a community of like a thousand people, probably not the best option for that. I think that this could start to seriously get away from you, especially from a moderation and organization standpoint. But that's it. The purpose of this video was just to give you a behind the scenes look of what it's like to use Campfire, give you some of my initial thoughts so that you can decide for yourself if it is something that you would like to try. So as always, if you found this video useful, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.